Okay, the next part of our combination work is called the flash guy. So we're going to run wheel through, but whenever I say flash guy, it means I want the ball at the foul line where the guy's flashing. And that would indicate to the forward that he's going to pass and throw a back cut to the guard. Let's take a look and see how this happens. Again, the wheel can be passed any way. So that point guard's going to pass it to the off guard. He's going to pass it to the forward. The, the guard's going to cut through. Okay, and in, in the event he doesn't get a pass, he's going to keep on going. This guard's going to replace. This guard's going to replace. This forward then is going to shuffle through. And if he doesn't get it, he's going to continue on to the corner. Once the ball's passed back to the guard, this is the flash guy. He's coming up to the top of the kick. When they hear me say flash guy, it means I want the ball thrown to that high post to the forward that it's flashing. Once that forward gets it, he's going to look to the opposite guard for a backdoor cut. This stops defenses from overplaying and it stops defenses from being aggressive. After a while, when we run wheel three or four times, the defense starts to think that they know what is coming. Uh, we have to be able to counter that by being able to hit backdoor cuts and act accordingly if the defense is going to give that up. So right now, we have five guys out. Okay, we're going to pass the ball to the right. Chris is going to come on up. Flash guy, flash guy, and you're going to turn and pass. Good. And we're going to try to time it a little bit better to where the guard waits until that high post gets it. So on this next one, Michael's going to pass to Paul. Xavier's going to come on up. Xavier's going to come up. Flash guy, flash guy, turn there. And that's the initial teaching of it, of knowing where to throw uh, in when we're doing our flash guy scenario. Uh, and this really affects teams because while they're watching Xavier come on up, okay, and Michael, you just hold the ball, but as they're watching Xavier come on up, they're looking at the ball and they're not seeing the backdoor cut that is going to happen, okay? So after we walk through that, Xavier can go back, after we walk through that, we're going to incorporate a defender to make it that much more difficult for us to throw that backdoor cut. So Brett, hop out. So Brett right here is going to play on that defender. Okay, you're going to play right in the middle, Brett, for this uh, guard and forward combination. Okay, and you're going to guard them once they get thrown and, and play some defense that we have to effectively pass from the high post to the flash. Guards, remember, wait until the, the high post gets it before you cut to the basket. Forwards, remember, you have to turn and deliver the basketball uh, with some efficiency. Okay, ready? Got pass the ball. Good. Flash guy, flash guy, turn, bounce pass, there. Excellent, good. Let's rewind that. That was good speed. That was good speed. Good, I'll pass the other way. Flash guy, flash guy. Good pass. Fine, good. Let's rewind. Let's rewind. Good, either way. Okay, come on up, Chris. Good, flash guy, flash guy. Good. Excellent. And again, this is built in, but this is also called by me in the process of seeing the defense overplay. One more time. One more time. The flash guy, flash guy. Good. Excellent. Hold the ball right there, Brett. So using that terminology or any terminology that you have uh, in working backdoor cuts will help um, stop teams from overplaying. And you just have to work on the, the forwards being able to pass effectively to the guards, working the backdoor cut and converting.